It's never easy to narrow down on a motion sensor in your home, and it's even harder to get one that works with Samsung SmartThings, stays reliable all the time, and ends up being the best bang for your buck. Now, previously I had reviewed eight different motion sensors that work with Samsung SmartThings, but for the most part, those were Zigbee devices. Today I have eight Z-Wave devices that you can use with Samsung SmartThings. Exactly half of the sensors I'm going to talk to you about today are coming from a company named Zoos. The reason I'm bringing so many of those onto the video here today is not because Zoos is sponsoring this, it's actually because they are really clear with the hubs they work with and how to get it working, specifically with Samsung SmartThings. Now, to couple with that, I have created a number of Samsung SmartThings tutorials for these sensors over on our tutorials channel so you can check that out as well as the product links down below. Throughout the video today we'll talk about custom device handlers that you have to install as of today but it is very clear that at this time Samsung is replacing those custom device handlers but keeping most of the custom capabilities that you will see in today's video. This is good news because it will take your devices to a local execution mode that doesn't rely on the internet, but in most cases you will keep all of the functions you see here today. Let's start out with the most basic sensor, but when I say basic, I just mean that all we have on the Zoo's motion sensor is motion detection. Now it's an incredibly small device and it's well designed with a magnetic component and a magnetic base as well. So this is mountable in a lot of different ways. The device can sit flat on a surface if you'd like it to, but keep in mind with a lot of these sensors, you kind of want to set them up a little bit higher in your home. So you want to get that base to the back kind of pointed or sitting on your wall or whatever surface you have. And then you want that sensor pointing down a little bit out into your space. That's the preferred way to get motion detection. Now, when you do sit this one on a surface, I find in a lot of cases that it just tilts itself a little bit up because of the way the magnets are working on this, just where they place them and how strong they are. I can sometimes get it to point straight out, but you will end up with a little bit of tilt. So I actually recommend this kind of mounted magnetically. The sensor's documentation states that it can see out 25 feet and 120 degrees out from center. Now that means 60 degrees on each side of the sensor here and of course above and below. But what I found in terms of my own testing is that anything beyond 20 feet became less and less reliable as I got a little further out. It took more movement and uh, sometimes it just didn't trigger. Now, I did move things to kind of the highest sensitivity settings with this device in order to get that to go on reliably. And I also set the settings really tight in terms of a cooldown to see how quickly I could get this to re-trigger motion detection automations. Now, I could get the sensor to go from motion detection to not having motion detected in five seconds, but for the next five to 10 seconds, what I often found was that I couldn't get it to re-trigger that motion detection. And this caused me a couple of issues. Number one, I drained the CR123A battery in this thing in five days. And I mean, it went from 100% down to 35% very quickly. Now, when I backed off those settings, it became more reliable. And just by taking it out to about 30 seconds for a cool down time or a clear time, that made this device not only stop consuming the battery, but also very reliable. Now, the good news for those of you that wanna use it a little more aggressively, like I was for testing, there is a micro USB port on the bottom of this, and that allows you to power this device instead of that battery. The other setting that I used to kind of get that 25 feet out was the motion sensitivity. and 
What I'll tell you with that is that I was getting a lot of false positives in terms of motion detection. When I did that with a lot of the sensors here today, I was getting a lot of false positives. So you have to actually move that sensitivity train down with the custom device handler that you will have to install. Now, that turns the device into a cloud, uh, cloud-based device with Samsung SmartThings, but I still found the detection and the execution of my routines and automations pretty quick with this. Not necessarily as quick as some of those other sensors in the other video we have. Once I had the motion sensor tuned properly, it became a really great motion sensor. And you know what, it has S2 security and for $30 US, it's the cheapest Z-Wave sensor I have on the desk here today probably one of the cheapest you'll find. Now, because it's just a motion sensor, you're probably not going to stick this in bathrooms and, and uh, situations where you wanna measure things like humidity or temperature. It's probably going to be used for pure security, pointed at doorways or halls in your home. And I stuck it, because of its magnetic mount, under a curtain rod, and that helped me uh, monitor a whole area in my kitchen and my living room because of its good depth and its good width. Now, it also doesn't have any lights on it really. So what you get there is a sensor that could be stuck in darker areas and not disturb you. Someone actually came to our previous motion sensor video, got quite upset with me that I did not review this, called it the best sensor they ever had. And so I marched out to the proverbial online store and purchased one of these. Now in the US, they are $50. And of course here in Canada, add another 15. So thanks for costing me all of that money. Now the sensor is called the GE in Brighton and it has a model number 34193, but they have a number of sensors that look just like this and perform basically the same way. There's a lot to like about the sensor initially. I like that it can sit flat. It has its own mounting hardware that you can uh, detach if you wanna twist that off or use it. And it's quite easy to mount this whatever way you would like. I also like the fact that it's getting over the air updates and there's a two year warranty coming with this device. But I ended up going through kind of a funny path with this sensor inside of Samsung SmartThings. And that's because I was initially getting a four minute cool down and you think about this sensor here that I could get uh, triggering every 10 seconds or so well four minutes waiting for this to clear makes it a bit of a different set uh, sensor so what I did is I went and I found a custom device handler and it seemed like the right one it had the right model number on it but when I installed that not only did it take this from being a locally connected device uh, to a cloud-based device, but it also did not improve that four minute cool down at all. I didn't have any control over it. And it appeared to have a tamper switch that never worked. So it doesn't have a tamper switch. This is again, a pure motion sensor. So I took it back actually to its default device handler and then I just relied on the benefits of this kind of a sensor. Now the benefits come in when we talk about range and distance. It really does seem to go up to 40 to 45 feet. Now I didn't have a space that I could measure indoors at 40 feet, but I was out there at about 35 feet and getting reliable reports out of this sensor. It also sees 180 degrees and I thought that was impossible so I tried to play Brian Burglar games with this sensor it absolutely does see you at 180 degrees so it is right uh, right perpendicular I think that's the term for it if you took two of these sensors you put them back to back or right on top of each other yeah you have that 360 degrees I can imagine this going into a lot of shops or a pair of those and it would cover your home for two years. That's the expected battery life. And I think that is related to the cool down time here where they're not triggering constantly or giving you that extra detail in the settings. 
So I could definitely see this being a really good security sensor again and covering massive areas. Definitely garages are a great situation for this kind of a sensor. I can see kitchens and living rooms, large spaces that you don't want to have constant re-trigger of your automations. If you're good with that four minute cooldown, there are some interesting use cases for these. Our next sensor is one of the older ones on the block here today, and there's a couple of new versions. You can actually get one of these Fabaro motion sensors that come in at around $50 US. You can get those for Apple HomeKit and not a Z-Wave version. Now, of course, I'm talking about the Z-Wave version that goes into Samsung SmartThings. The first thing that is kind of important is that this mounting hardware exists, and that's because this thing is absolutely a ball I am going to set it down over there so it's not going crazy the whole time I'm talking about it, but this sensor comes with a little more on it. It isn't just a motion sensor and that's very important when you're talking about trying to automate your whole home in, in a smarter way. So we're getting light or illumination and we're getting temperature with this sensor. Now I didn't find the temperature too accurate versus some other verified devices. It seemed a little bit high in some cases, but we'll talk about that situation. And Lux, you know what, across the set of devices that measure Lux or illumination, it always seems to be widely varied. So what I recommend in general there is that you get to know your sensor a little bit. You expect a few days of maybe not perfect automations and you kind of fine tune over time then it works just fine. Now there's also a tamper switch, which is why I had to set the thing down because I have set the LEDs to just fire off whenever this is tampered with. And when you look in the manual actually, Fabaro tells you that it can be an earthquake sensor. So it's quite the device when you think about all of those different sensors. As soon as I installed it in SmartThings, I got access to all these settings, which gives me access to those tamper settings and much more. I never required a custom device handler, and that makes this sensor a completely local device. The other thing that those settings give you the ability to do is really fine tune how this device works. You can change the thresholds and how long the delays are between measurements. That's really great capability, but when we're talking about the motion sensing capability, Billies, this thing got wild. So within those settings, I had the Fabaro motion sensor all the way down to a one second cool down. You don't want to do this because it's absolutely insane and it'll drive you crazy, but you can do that. And if you extend just a little bit, this becomes a really great sensor. So what was happening was it would detect motion. And even if I was continuing to move, it would say no motion detected. And then it would re-trigger again. All of that was happening within a couple of seconds and I was kind of laughing to myself at how crazy this sensor or what this sensor was capable of. As soon as I extended that timeout, it became a really great sensor. You can see how often it is sitting here flashing even with the settings kind of dialed back. What you would end up happening is draining that CR123A battery on there really quickly. It's in general supposed to give you a one year battery life, but that's not going to happen if you get that tight with these settings. It was also very responsive or very quick and it was only when I got it down to that one second re-trigger time that it sometimes had a bit of a delay. You will always see or feel a little bit of delay with these Z-Wave devices here and your Samsung SmartThings hub versus some of those other ones that we reviewed previously, but this one is every bit as quick as any other sensor here on the table. And now the one drawback to this one is that at about 15 feet away, that's gonna be your maximum for this device to see you. And it's only a 90 degree angle. So one foot out and one foot to the, to the side really is what you're gonna get for a range if you think about that. So it's a little bit limited and that makes my recommendations for this more situated in smaller rooms. And you know what, with the ability to turn off that LED, you can use this in bathrooms, you get that temperature sensing, you get the illumination, you can really customize your lighting in there. And I think it still works in smaller rooms like offices and spaces like that. So you can micro control maybe your temperature or the lighting levels there. 
The last recommendation, really, if you think about that as a security device and you have the tamper switch kind of going crazy or the tamper notification or just that little eyeball LED in general, that's probably going to dissuade a lot of people. So I actually think that's a really great security sensor to kind of have pointed towards doorways and windows. One of the things I do think is missing from the Fabaro is humidity. And that is because of the design. It's a ball, it's enclosed. They can't get humidity out of it, but our next sensor can. That is the Zoo's four in one. Now this is a little bit of an older sensor. It's been sold for a little bit here from Zoo's, but there's a lot here to like. So the Zoos 4-in-1 or the ZSE40 is the device name. It has those four sensors. So you're getting temperature, you're getting light, and you're also getting humidity on this. And that means that this can go in a couple of other situations. I also found the sensors, the other sensors other than motion, relatively accurate with this device. So I didn't feel like I had to be thinking about offsets or worried about my automations working exactly the same versus other devices I have already around my home. The good news is that those percentages or those differences were really small. I was within a degree of any kind of verified temperature sensor and within a percent in terms of relative humidity to what I was expecting. And while I have spoken about the lumens or the illumination lighting levels kind of being different throughout, this one felt a little more stable to me. It seemed to get me to a point where I could understand its range in my lighting situations a little quicker and then program some better automations really quickly with it. The other thing within the settings, and again, you got to get that custom device handler. It opens up so much with this that makes it a cloud device but you were getting offset capabilities for light or the illumination, the temperature and the humidity. That meant I could align this with other devices in my home. That's not something I was getting with a Fabaro. And I think it's really important for getting, you know, one single automation with your Nest thermostat in Samsung SmartThings. You can use this then to set along with other sensors around your home to set the temperature or the humidity. Within those settings is a motion clear delay and initially it seemed a little bit strange because the firmware at the bottom of smart things in the device page was saying something different than that settings page was. Zoos, you might want to adjust that one. But still, I put in 15 seconds and my motion re-trigger time for this device ended up around 25 to 30 seconds in my testing and it was very reliable to re-trigger immediately after that. Like the GE in Brighton here, this had a huge range. Now it can see up to 40 feet per the documentation and 125 degree out. So 62 and a half degrees out from center. That's a huge range. What I'll say in my testing is that it was extremely reliable up to 20 feet. After that, it started to get a little less reliable. You needed to move a little more. And with the sensitivity settings turned all the way up in order to get to that distance, I was getting false positive uh, motion detection with this device. So you kind of want to tune that down and expect about 20 feet out and a pretty good width, but that makes it incredibly versatile and they do give you some mounting hardware to be able to put this in a few places. Otherwise it can actually just sit on a shelf. In terms of recommendations for the Zoos 4-in-1, you know what, once you get those settings tuned again, you're kind of hearing that a lot with the Zoos devices here, then it becomes a really reliable sensor. And with the distance and the field of view that you have access to here, this is a really great sensor for those big public spaces you have in your home. Plus the temperature, humidity, and illumination sensors being fairly accurate and then having that offset capability means that you can use this in conjunction with other systems in your home. That's really powerful stuff right there. The only thing that I would say this sensor is missing is maybe the S2 security 
security, which I'll talk about in the very next sensor here in a minute. But the other thing that makes this usable, even in big bedroom spaces, is the fact that you can change that LED. You're, you're seeing it here flashing every time it sees motion, and you're also seeing it, it flashes when motion detection has stopped. So you can actually turn that LED off in the settings, and that's really important for putting it into bedroom spaces so you're not being uh, <laughs> shown a nice big red light in your eyes all the time. The next sensor I'm going to talk about, well, I told you already, it has S2 security on it, and it's the brand new Zoos Q sensor. So this is the definite newest one, but it doesn't have the 700 series Z-Wave chip. I was kind of hoping for that here, but we're still getting that S2 security. Now, the name is Q sensor, as I said, but I'm pretty sure Zoos should have called this Zoozy Q. And no, Zoos, you can't have that name. That's mine, trademarked. In a lot of ways, this is the 4-in-1 sensor in a different form factor, and I like the form factor, I like the look of this better, but the temperature was a little bit low and the illumination was a little bit high versus what I was expecting, which would be fine, but our current custom device handler doesn't have that offset capability that the 4-in-1 does, so I'm kind of hoping that that gets updated in the long run. That custom device handler also helped me manage the sensitivity settings, which I really had to do here, or else I had a lot of imaginary friends triggering my Zuzi Q sensor here. The other thing that it allowed me to do was get that cool down all the way down to 15 seconds. And that meant that I had reliable motion detection 15 to 20 feet, that was kind of my testing range where I was getting 100% of the responses out of this. Otherwise, once I got out past about 20 feet, it got a little bit less reliable every foot I stepped out. Now, that means that it has less of a range than this 4-in-1 sensor, but the other part about this is that it had a little bit of an extra delay whenever it was responding to that motion detection. My lights took an extra little half second to a second here versus a lot of the other sensors that you're seeing here. So I'm not sure what that delay is all about with this device, but if that kind of a thing bothers you, this might not be the device for you. It does have a tamper switch on board and I think with the mounting hardware being so good and giving you so many other options other than maybe sitting it on a surface because that sensor never gets to the right angle if it's sitting that way but this mounting hardware is very nice very easy to work with and the fact that you have double the battery life with the CR 123A's the two in here and a micro USB powering option makes this more of a versatile device I could see it in a lot of other places and so that tamper switch might be really important if someone comes into your home and wants to deal with this device in terms of recommendations for old Zuzi Q here, you know what, with that custom device handler not having the offsets, a little bit of difference here in terms of some of those other sensors, this might be a bit of a wait and see for a lot of people. It's still a very good motion detector and it will definitely serve the purpose of going into a lot of spaces. You can even turn off the pinpoint LED here on that. You can turn that off in the settings. So this can sit in places like bedrooms and of course with the humidity and the temperature and the illumination sensors, that's gonna be a really great sensor for those bathroom spaces. One of Zeus's big competitors is Inovelli, and that's because they make a lot of the same equipment or types of smart devices. Now, Inovelli's four-in-one sensor here has one thing that is ahead of Zeus's other sensors that we've talked about here today. That is over-the-air updates, which I think will be important to you and is kind of important for moving down the line with Z-Wave here over the next couple of years. The other thing that's really important is this has S2 security on it, which we're only missing from a few sensors on the table, but is something that I think is kind of important over the next few years as well. It also sits flat or can be mounted using its mounting hardware, which isn't my favorite mounting hardware, but you're really only working with this one time. Now, you can do all of those things and then you have the light temperature and humidity sensors on here. The thresholds 
though for temperature and humidity, you get one degree threshold and 1% humidity for triggering those updates with those two sensors. This has the capability to offset those other sensors that allows you to get it more aligned with your other devices in your home. Plus it has 10 motion sensing sensitivity levels, which eliminates those false positives as you just tune the device to the right level for your space. Now it gives you 16 and a half feet and 110 degrees out from center, which is an okay range. It's not the biggest, it's kind of closer to the Fibaro motion sensor sitting here. The CR123A that's in this device, it's supposed to give you up to two years of battery life, but I know you guys will be a little more aggressive with your settings. You probably end up around one year of battery life, just like me. Now, the other thing you can do though to eliminate that is a micro USB powering option, but you would have to actually 3D print a new back cover. It's gonna make this thing look a little bit different. When you couple that with just a little bit of different mounting hardware, this is a bit of a different device. Plus, you have to think about those two uh, sensors on the top of this. You can't actually be sitting those down on a table if you're just gonna sit it. So there's just some things to think about in terms of how you're going to power this device, but I think just using the CR123A is gonna be a pretty good option. The one issue I actually ran into with this device is more around moving it around my home. This one became disconnected a few more times as I moved it around to do different testing. It's not that it didn't come back within about 15 minutes of that disconnection, but it did tend to do that more than the other sensors here. I don't know if that will lead to some more uh, unreliability in the future but it seemed very stable in all of my other testing here and I've had it for about a month and so in terms of recommendations with all of the sensor types on here and the fact that you have that offset capability there's a lot of different situations that you can use this in throughout your home smaller public spaces because of that kind of 16 foot distance there you're going to need it to be a little bit of a smaller public space obviously for security this is going to work great and in bathrooms it's going to be really great as well now that we've talked about three sensors with a humidity measurement in them, we should do a quick comparison. And what I found was that both the Innovelli 4-in-1 and the Zoos 4-in-1 were both very responsive to changes in humidity and relatively accurate. The Zoos Q, however, overshot humidity levels and took much longer to come back down, even when other sensors showed lower numbers. And that brings me to a very similar, at least looking sensor. This is the AOTech Tri Sensor. In our previous video, the only Z-Wave product we reviewed there was the AOTech Multi Sensor, which has a couple of more sensors over a Tri Sensor, which has three. So we get temperature and you know what? It's very accurate as far as I'm concerned. We get illumination, which is all over the place as is the case in this whole video with all of these sensors. And then we get motion detection, which I can bring the cool down all the way down to one second with this device. But what you will feel, even if you take it down to that one second, is the delay with this. And this is the same thing I talked about with the AOTech Multi Sensor. It's taking about half a second to kind of respond to motion and then you will see, because of its cloud connection and custom device handler, you will then see an additional timeline there. I'm seeing it take up to a whole second to fully respond and execute automations. When I did take those settings all the way down to one second, well, I wasn't thinking very much and I left the sensor in that way and I burned out the CR123A battery in two weeks. So I replaced it and now I set the settings to reasonable levels and it should last me about a year. It has a really good distance that it can see, 23 feet, and it was pretty reliable up to that 23 feet. It only has a 90 degree field of view, so not as wide as some of the other sensors, but with the different mounting options that you have, sitting this on a table or with the bracket that is very good, you have some options for covering the area you'd like. It has both S2 security features and over-the-air updates, and when you think about the price point being at $45 here, which is 
considerably lower than that AOTEC multi sensor, and then you're only losing humidity and the UV sensor and then the tamper switch versus that multi sensor. I think that this device has a longer shelf life and it's likely to sell a lot more over the long run than that multi sensor. I would take that trade off in a lot of cases if I didn't need the humidity measurement because UV for me hasn't been a big use and you don't need tamper on all of your devices. So I think with its huge range that it can see, this becomes a great device for a lot of situations. The one situation I won't recommend the tri-sensor or the multi-sensor for is a situation where you're going to feel the latency or the delay in that device. And what I mean by that is if you're relying on motion detection to trigger on lights and that's something that's going to happen constantly for you, you might become frustrated with that extra little bit of delay that I find in both of AOTEC's bigger sensors here. When you talk about going outside with motion detection, it becomes a bit of a specialized thing. All of these other sensors, if you put them outside, you're gonna get fake responses or false positives constantly from all of them. Now the Zoo's outdoor motion sensor, it is the ZSE 29 and it has a couple of options for how you put it outside. Number one, you get three AA batteries with this device and if you don't want to use that, there's actually a micro USB adapter that fills in the slot here and then the cable comes out the back. You got to pop out the little piece here. That gives you the ability to power this device indefinitely. If you want to use those batteries, it should give you about a year, even with the advanced settings and getting pretty tight on those settings. I've seen these maintain pretty well, but the outdoor rating only goes down to minus 20. So that's something you want to think about. And at minus 20, I think these batteries aren't going to do that well anyways. Having said that, I will be leaving this device outside and I'll let you guys know how that goes in the Canadian winter here when we hit minus 40. It costs $45, which is the same as the tri sensor sitting over here, and it's really very competitive versus these other sensors. It feels a lot bigger and a lot beefier, and there's a lot more design that went into that, so I feel like that pricing is really good. I've been using it for two months now, and I will tell you that even though I went and I put in the custom device handler, it has been reliable and powerful, and I don't even think it has missed one notification. Hard for me to know exactly, but I actually have a second motion detector and a camera out there just to make sure. So, so far this has been perfect. When it wasn't perfect was when I was using the base device handler and trying to use these dials on the top. So I really think for a lot of you, it's going to require that. Now it does have a tamper switch within it, which means if someone's trying to rip it off of whatever you've mounted it to, well, you're going to at least get a notification before it disappears down the road. It has S2 security on it, but it doesn't have any of the over the air updates. That to me is not necessarily as big of a deal with this kind of a sensor because you think about putting this around your home, getting all of those notifications on your garage, on your porch, just around your yard as well seeing that it sees about 30 feet out and has a pretty good field of view as well makes this a very powerful device outside your home. As I said, what I'm doing with it is putting it on the porch and then I know when people are arriving, but what I'm doing with that is then taking that notification from SmartThings, putting it into Amazon's voice assistant, and that allows me to bring up a camera feed on those smart displays. If you need to know how to do that, there's actually a link down below that you can use to get that going in your own smart home. One thing I think you'll find throughout this set of devices is that they're a little bit more customizable than most sensors. And I really like that capability, but on the flip side, they are a little bit slower than the other eight sensors that we reviewed. Most of those are Zigbee and they tend to have a quicker response when it comes to your automation. So I think whatever you're kind of keying in on now, you'll want to go watch our other eight motion sensors compared smart things video here. It's up on screen. You can go check that out. Otherwise, thanks for watching today. And of course, don't hate automate.